As far as modes of transport are concerned, civil aviation has been the fastest growing and the most technically innovative of them all. From the first attempts at powered manned flight to regular space flight, we have only just exceeded 100 years of aviation. What is incredible is that the first scheduled international air service was started in 1919. It is probably no coincidence, therefore, that the first International Conference on Civil Aviation took place in 1919 in Paris. Since then, the field of our chosen profession has been subjected to far more international legislation and international agreements than any other profession. The overriding need, which is recognised by all, regardless of political inclination, is for higher and higher safety standards. The degree of international cooperation in this respect is outstanding and shows that where there is genuine desire to achieve international agreement, it can be forthcoming. After the Second World War and the huge technological advances that were made in aviation, the world at peace sought the solutions to the huge legal and economic concerns that confronted them. There was the question of commercial rights, the legality of overflights of other nations' airspace, and the maintenance and development of navigation equipment, often placed in sparsely populated parts of the world. For these reasons, the United States of America conducted exploratory discussions with the Allied nations during the early months of 1944 to seek solutions to these challenges. Subsequently, invitations were sent out to 55 Allied and neutral states to meet in Chicago in November 1944. For five weeks, the delegates of the 54 states who attended considered the problems of international civil air travel. At the end of the conference, a Convention on International Civil Aviation was signed by 52 of the 54 attending states. This convention is more commonly referred to as the Chicago Convention. The Chicago Convention set up the permanent International Civil Aviation Organization, known as ICAO, as the means to secure international cooperation and attain the highest possible degree of uniformity in the regulations, standards and procedures regarding civil aviation matters. At the same time, the International Services Transit Agreement and the International Air Transport Agreement were signed, but you will learn about these agreements later. The 52 states who agreed to the Convention would foster the development of international civil aviation to help create and preserve friendship and understanding amongst the world's people, so as to prevent its abuse becoming a threat to world security and promoting cooperation between all peoples of the world. At present, there are now over 180 contracting states to the Chicago Convention, which is up to edition 9. The Chicago Convention consists of 96 articles and accepts the principle that every state has complete and exclusive sovereignty over the airspace above its territory. It also provides that no scheduled international air service may operate over or into the territory of a contracting state without the state's previous consent. It also establishes the privileges and restrictions of all contracting states to provide for the adoption of the international standards and recommended practices, called SARPs, and these are for the regulation of air navigation, the installation of navigational facilities by contracting states, and the facilitation of air transport by the reduction of customs and immigration formalities. Again, you will study these in more detail in subsequent lessons. The application of any national law is only applicable to the territory over which the state has jurisdiction. In aviation, the extent of that jurisdiction is limited by the horizontal limits of the national territory, but unlimited vertically. The early international maritime rights enabled nation sea traffic to ply the high seas for the purposes of movement. At the outset of commercial flying, similar rights of free aviation operations over the high seas were embodied in the Geneva Convention. The Chicago Convention went on to specifically embody the rights of contracting nations' aircraft to fly over the high seas and territory of another contracting state for the purposes of civil aviation. 
so we can see that territory, in aviation terms, applies to the airspace existing over the defined limits of a nation's boundary at ground level. Sovereignty is the right of a contracting state to impose its national law upon users of its territorial airspace. Suzerainty refers to the concept of nations accepting the rules and regulations agreed by common consent at international conventions, where there is no requirement in national law of those nations concerned to adopt those rules and regulations. The attendees of the Chicago Convention attached great importance to the question of commercial rights in international civil aviation and agreed to grant each other certain rights regarding the commercial exploitation of civil aviation. These rights are known as the freedoms of the air and give the right to transit the airspace of contracting states to scheduled flights. We will cover these freedoms of the air in more detail later on. Not all of the 52 signatories that were on the original Chicago Convention were able to reach agreement about all the aspects concerning this issue, but two bilateral agreements were set up. The International Air Services Transit Agreement provides for aircraft of signatory states to fly over or land for technical reasons in the territory of another signatory state. And the International Air Transport Agreement concerns the carriage of traffic between the state of registry and any other signatory state. A scheduled flight is a flight for which agreement has been reached between states at government level. It will concern a schedule and will detail the aerodrome, the number of flights, the period allowed for the flights to take place and the reciprocal arrangements that have been agreed. Non-scheduled flights are those flights to which no schedule is attached. For example, one-off or charter flights that are flown on a non-regular basis. It is part of the convention that signatories cannot refuse such flights on political or economic grounds. Another expression you will come across is cabotage. Cabotage is when an airline wishes to operate domestically within a state other than its state of registry. The EU, for example, applies the cabotage rule to the route between Berlin and Paris. That is, as far as non-EU carriers are concerned, the flight is deemed domestic, not international and so they cannot operate it commercially. Additionally, in accepting ICAO contracting status, a state, for example State A, agrees not to enter into an agreement with another contracting state, for example State B, to allow State B exclusive rights of the internal scheduled operations of State A. Under international law, states are permitted to impose customs tariffs, and prohibit the importation of prescribed articles. In order to allow contracting states to maintain such customs regulations, international flights are required to make the first point of landing in a contracting state at a recognised international airport, which provides both customs and health and immigration facilities. The specifics of these rules will be dealt with later on in the section concerning facilitation.